So this week we were sketching dresses in class and how to sketch pleats came up in the discussion. So I thought it'd be a great topic to cover in this week's video. So the particular type of pleat we were drawing were knife pleats and they actually were trickier than I was expecting, but I think we found a good way to make them look believable and also an efficient method to sketch them. So take a look. For showing a simple pleat that's sewn into a seam, you can usually just indicate it with a line. I like to use a width profile to give my line that thick and thin look and I'm using width profile number four for this. So like an actual pleat, it sort of looks like the fullness gradually releases into the rest of the skirt portion of the dress. I'll sometimes even add a little gray shadow for emphasis if I'm doing a CAD or making the sketch a bit more stylized. If it's an inverted pleat, I'll add another small curved line to the opposite side. Now our class was specifically trying to find an efficient way to do knife pleats. And so this is what we came up with. Draw one straight knife pleat. It should be a little longer than the full length of the skirt. Place it a little bit past the edge of the bodice and then place another pleat on the opposite side of the bodice, also a little bit past the edge. Next, use the blend tool to blend one knife pleat to the other. Double click the blend tool and change the spacing to specified steps and add the number of pleats you need on the front of the dress, minus the two you're blending from. So for instance, if I want 14 pleats on the front of my skirt, I'll type in 12 for the specified steps so that the end results will be 14 pleats. Once you make your pleats, you'll probably notice a little overlapping occurring at the hem. Use the direct selection tool and select the endpoints of both the first and last pleats and use your arrow key to tap over until the hem looks correct. Now that you've got your pleats, you need to actually shape them so they look like they fit onto the dress. Select the pleats and switch to the free transform tool. Free transform has four different options you can choose from and for this, we're going to choose the last option called free distort. This tool will allow you to freely reshape whatever object you've chosen. So we're going to use it to pull the pleats into the waist. Move your cursor onto the circle in the upper corners of the free distort box and drag the pleats until they align with the edge of the waist. If all your pleats are going in one direction, then on one side of the skirt, you'll drag until the circle aligns with the edge of the waist. But note that the pleat will not line up exactly at the edge. And that's okay because we're going to go back and draw in the side seam. So now we've got our pleats and we wanna add the side seam to one side of the dress and a little shaping for the hips. So first, I'm going to expand the blend. And you wanna make sure that you're fairly happy with your pleats before you do this, because once you expand, you'll no longer be able to change the blend. To expand it, you're going to go to Object, Expand, and that will change all those pleats into editable paths and anchors. The next thing I'm going to do is add the side seam and I'm just going to draw that in with the pen tool. And then so that I ensure I have the exact same hip curve on the other side, I'm going to copy and paste the side seam and then reflect it to the other side. Now this is just going to serve as a guide for reshaping. I'm not actually going to use that line in the sketch. Drag a horizontal guideline to the spot where you added the point for the hip curve. And I'm doing this because I want to add a little shaping across a few of the pleats. The pleats at center front will hang pretty straight, but as you move further out towards the hip, they'll curve a little bit. So I'm going to add a point at the hip line to three or four additional pleats. And then I'll add direction handles by clicking on the icon, convert selected anchor points to smooth. Lastly, I'll just use my arrow keys to arrow over and gradually reshape the pleating.
notice that the lines at the top of the pleats are still showing on the bodice, and there's a few ways you can take care of this. The first and probably simplest, especially if you don't need to show it in color, is to either send the pleats behind your bodice if it's filled with white, or if you have something like, say, a tie to cover it up, you can just add the tie over the waist. You could also mask that section of your dress so that the extra pieces just get cut off. And of course, you can manually move the lines in place with your direct selection tool. The last option, which is great if you're planning to add color, is to use the Shape Builder tool. Now you guys know I love the Shape Builder tool and it's a great tool for creating shapes, but it can also combine and delete objects. So to delete the extra lines, press and hold the Alt or Option key and click directly on the small lines to delete them. Just make sure you click directly on those lines so that you don't delete something you didn't intend to. So now, not only have you cleaned up your sketch, but you're also able to easily fill it with color. The Shape Builder would be my preferred method because it's rare that I'm designing something and I'm not also creating a CAD, but there are plenty of designers that only need black and white sketches. So you definitely have some options. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time.